be holding that. We got the magic token. But I'll try to do my best to get you some sneak peeks at what the R18 is going to be. Would you say that's a pretty big secret that we're going to be unveiling right now? It is. We will attach this to our BMW R18. learned a bunch sitting down with Edgar and kind of walking through the three stages of design. Hi, good, good to see you. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. Yeah, most welcome. So you had a nice weekend. Good. I did have a good weekend. No complaints. And you had Schweinsbraten and Leberkäse and stuff and all this. Is, was that food and beer? Yeah, yeah. 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 We got, I, had, I had my got my first. Uh, what, what were those called? Yeah, yeah. Krug. Yeah, <laughs> had the Mas first Krug. <laughs> fast one last night. So very good. I guess I'm official. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the space that we're in right now. This is our design studio. Uh huh. So there's run about 30 people working here. Okay. So all motor ad design is yeah. here in this building. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about yourself and you know working here, uh, you know, as head of design. Basically, I'm, I'm, I started here like, I don't know, 30 years ago, something as a, we call it a sketch monkey, you know, <laughs> I mean, you, you start with the first uh, yeah. loose and up sketches, you do little bits and pieces off the market parts and stuff. There was no computer sketching in those days, yeah. so you did everything on paper and pen. Times were different, I mean, design was more like an, I would say an appendix to the engineer side, you know. So would you say the engineering side of the business or the engineering side of the overall design was kind of came first at that point in time and then design followed? BMW was very engineering driven. Everything BMW was very in, uh, innovative and it had to be quality and it had to be uh, precision. Uh, which of course was always in the genes of BMW, yeah. but design maybe was not the uh, was not the very leading factor. You know, mm -hmm. it was more like this German design. You know, like yeah. After we kind of left the design offices or design studios, it's kind of a two-story building, and we went into like the design garage or the garage for the designers. That was like a kid in a candy store moment, like. There's motorcycles everywhere, there's parts, there's clay, there's sheets over bikes with tires sticking out of it. And I'm not allowed to tell you guys some of the things that I saw because I'm contractually binded, but hey, there was a lot of really cool stuff in there. Uh, actually, I just saw that uh, Rona is here. Yeah, I, I met Rona a few months back, actually. Hey, guys. Yeah? Yeah. All right, sir. Good Hi. to see you again. So you guys know, Hi, eh? Good to see you, yeah. Good to see you again. So happy coincidence that you're here because I mean you technically don't work no 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 under the no, BMW no. headquarters. No, no. What's it like getting to? Because obviously BMW kind of designed the motorcycle and then they give you their baby. They're like, okay, now make it a reality. What's what's that like? Of course, it's an honor. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, of course. I, and uh, the thing is that we like to work with the guys. Yeah. So I made some proposals and then Ronald made them into to metal, for example, the exhaust where we... Uh, where so we do you do like kind of like CAD and then like 3D printing? Uh, normally we do, but for this bike we did more or less the very much handmade. So you went kind of back to the old school and just did it? Yeah, because with Ronald it's easy to do. So yeah. you just give him a, a quick sketch and then we just eyeball it. We walked past it, I think that was that, okay. right? Let's go check it out. Actually, the bike is in there. We should have a look. Yeah. Okay, guys. Let's take yeah. a look. Yep. Okay. So. When we were in the design garage, it was really cool to see the clay. And that's something you always kind of see like in design commercials. You always see them playing with the clay. It's because you get to touch, you get to feel. The steps that they walked me through in, in the designing process was sketching, then they 3D mock it up in like the CAD program, then they take it to clay and they kind of make some of those real-time changes that they might not see within the 3D program and they can really touch and get their hands on that clay form. Maybe not 100% production form, but you know, they can get a physical piece 
for the, for the next stages in the process. So it, it's a bit rude. I'm standing here staring at the production bike, which you guys eyes up up here the whole time. We're gonna sit down and kind of talk about little details and stuff that these gentlemen kind of work and mold with, with the clay. So we can't show you the entire bike, but I'll try to do my best to get you some sneak peeks at what the R18 is gonna be. You know, I see some things here in, in the clay. So tell me what, what's going on. Yeah, we had the, the, the original design shape mm -hmm. and then we had feedback from the engineers mm -hmm. about you know, some stuff we still had to modify. How do you, I mean, how do you, I see you have a smooth line here. Yep. This is kind of just whatever, smush. So how do, you, how do you do that? How do you get the lines? So this material, when you put it in the oven, it becomes soft. And so it's, like, it's called like industrial, industrial clay. Yeah. After it cools down, it becomes uh, harder. And then you can scrape it like you would scrape your Parmesan cheese. <laughs> and then you, and you take it off uh, bit by bit. And then later on, when you're more close to the actual shape, yeah. you become more and more precise with the, with the tools. So, so I mean, actually that looks almost a bit old fashioned. Yeah. Very old fashioned. But I think it's still very valid to have a physical model because at some certain point you want to sit on the bike, you want to, you want to feel the bike, you want to feel the ergonomics. Mm -hmm and you want to have just a physical touch of it. Yeah. And this cannot be provided by all this uh, computer-aided stuff. Yeah. So, got to see the R18 for the first time today completed, and I gotta say, it's a pretty magical experience. Also magical is watching these three guys kind of cut it up, talking about just the, from inception to final production of the R18. You know, three great minds like this, the head of design, the fabricator, you know, the guy that's doing the CAD modifications and stuff like that. Just a really cool experience to get, once again, behind the curtain and into a top secret room that would generally be off limits. What, what, what is this room? I mean, this, is, this room is pretty amazing, but what do you guys call this room? Exactly, so we're here in the modeling part of the design uh, studio, and we have this uh, beautiful big LED wall yeah. where we can show our uh, CID models and discuss them uh, in detail. How do you design it to have a soul? How do you design it to have that feeling? Now that is, uh, that is this kind of romantics for mechanics. I mean, you, 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 we all live with these with his uh, computers and cell phones, all these black boxes, which are super intelligent mm -hmm. and they all feed your brain, but they don't really feel your guts. Yeah. And mechanics is something you can, you can see, you look at it and you see the function of the bike. Edgar kind of walked me through the steps of it, but it really started to click when I sat down with Bart at the, at the sketchboard and he really broke it down in the three steps of how you look at a bike or how they design a bike and kind of had this epiphany moment watching these watching Bart break it down where it's like you just when you're walking up to a motorcycle in the wild. Hi Don, how are you doing? Hey Bart. I'm good Bart. How are you? I'm good. good afternoon. I'm good. What is the, the basic recipe for designing a motorcycle? Like what are you what what's the formula? What are the ingredients that you use to, to, to build a motorcycle? Uh, we generally go in three steps. I mean we have a first read, a second read and a third read. The first read is the overall silhouette of the bike, the outline. Mm -hmm. Second read would be moving in closer to the bike, then you start to pick up some of the components, the motor, of course in this case a boxer motor. Uh, you will start to uh, recognize the shapes of the tank, uh, the seat, the fender, and then as you move in for a third read, then you start to recognize the components of the bike, the foot pegs, say the triple clamp, yeah. headlight, all that details. So you guys got to basically design the motor and exactly. then you found, talked to I guess the mechanical side you're like okay make these cases to be what we want in, uh, from a design perspective. Exactly so we had like as you see on the left side there's like the basic uh, dimensions yeah. which we had to respect but everything else we could decide. How do you or how does your team sit down and look at the past and try to bring that into the future? I think BMW has a, it has a big history, has a huge history, but uh, let's say before the 90, we, we did not really use it. Yeah. We did not really uh, execute it too, too much. With the R18, we really in intensified this and mm -hmm. uh, simultaneously the time is definitely right for this thing. Uh, I, I mentioned this, people are really looking for this, uh, for this roots thing. I mean, this historic st stuff is getting really important again. Mm -hmm. Mechanics is really getting important again. Mechanics, as I used to call it, the, the luxury of the future or one luxury of the future. Okay. Uh, I think this is a really valuable thing 
we wanted to instrumentalize, yes. Oli. So. Hello. Hi. Tommy. My name is Oli. Hello. Pleasure. What nice uh, to see you. What do you do here? I do, do all the colors and the trims on the surfaces, on the bikes and seats. Paint jobs. So basically any of the uh, exterior surfaces that yeah. you see on the bike, yeah. that's kind of your world. So I see pinstriping. Yes. What, what else do you do here? Tell me a little bit more. What you can see here is that we, that we made some examinations on, on the pinstripe, but we decided to use this. It's, the, it's a very classic pinstripe. These are some, some motor colors. As you can see here, this is the, the raw material. Yeah. And we found a, a color which really mimics the raw material. So how you guys can kind of see, this is what our metal starts as, just a raw. And what they're trying to do is be able to coat and protect it, but at the same time still feel like it's the raw or original casing color, so to say. Yes. Chrome. Here you can see kind of the badge that's side, the badge side of the motor. We put on the, on the motor. Yeah. So it should be like, like that. And also fits to the, to the dark yeah. case color. What do we got? What's this? Is this for a uh, bar? This clamp? is a chrome sample, mm -hmm. as we, which we used for the the, the case valve one. cover. You can see it here. Yeah. The chrome chrome part, and this was our sample. Yeah. For so the supplier. Not a lot of plastics. Not a lot of. No, no plastic. We don't have plastic. Really it's plastic a, that's parts. A that's a good answer. So I see you got a you got the badge here. Mm -hmm. And. I see that badge doesn't look like this badge. No. This is the old, this is the old school look. badge. Yes. Yes, this is the old school. This is what we have with our, with our core bikes. Yeah. Now we can show you something. Would you say that's a pretty big secret that we're going to be unveiling right now? It is. We will attach this to our BMW R18. These guys don't forget about the heart and soul and the touch and the feel of what riding a motorcycle is. It's really cool to see such a big company pay attention to such small details and the personal details of the process of building a motorcycle. The designers get all of the freedom first and then the mechanical side comes in and has to make it work. And that's a really big change. How important would you say individualization or customization is to the R18 project? We learned a lot from the 90. Yeah. And I think for the R18, customization is a very important yeah. uh, item. And for us, it's very important to have a big variety of, of aftermarket parts. Yeah. Do you guys work with like third-party people for aftermarket parts since they are considered aftermarket parts? Yeah, yeah we do. We do work with uh, with uh, external companies yeah. also. I mean, we do a lot here. Next or the next two weeks, we are flying to California. It's my backyard. So you come along. <laughs> uh, we take you. You can show. Uh, you can see how these parts are developed. Uh huh. And we, so we can bring these guys along. Of course, we can. Cool. Yeah, come along. Look forward to it. Look forward. When I was chatting with Edgar in his office, he had mentioned that he's going to be coming to Southern California to visit some of his third-party suppliers. So he was gracious enough to invite us along. And so we're going to sit down, or we're going to walk through, we're going to go on a tour. I don't really know, but be sure to check out the next episode on individualization. And leave some comments below. Tell us what you love, tell us what you hate. And uh, so yeah, till next time. Catch you guys later. Just letting the suspense build like you've been doing to us the whole time. So real talk, when are we going to see the production book? Okay, you ask me so often. You many, are asked so many, many people. Many times. Yeah. I thought we were friends. I got it. No, I got this information for you. Okay. So. Glasses are off. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting serious now. Very serious. First time. You're going to see the production bike. Thank God. High five. Go team. It's a wrap for all actors.